Well, welcome to Christian Answers. This is Pastor Jeff Short. Glad to have you along for our program today, where we're going to be zeroing in on Hollywood's influence in corrupting morality in the United States and around the world. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Uh, Now, there are many other institutions that are corrupting the morality of the United States and the world, and we could talk about the uh, music industry. We recently saw the Grammy Awards, that debacle, where they had basically a satanic ritual going on with Satan and demons and flames, all kinds of disgusting things. And that's just the visible uh, entertainment aspects of the Grammys. The actual lyrics of songs, the corrupt morality that is exhibited by the band members, singers, songwriters, and every everyone connected with the music industry. We could go on and on about that, but that's another video. We could talk about the corrupting influence of education on young people, the indoctrination, the brainwashing into the LGBTQ movement, and so on and so forth. But today, I want to zero in on the corruption of morality by Hollywood. I'm talking about the music industry. I'm talking um, the movie industry. Excuse me, the people that produce, act, write, and promote Hollywood movies, uh, coming from Hollywood, California. Now it's spread to all other parts of the country. When you have, for example, um, Netflix producing movies, you have Apple producing movies. You have all kinds of streaming platforms producing movies. So it's not just Hollywood, but it's the whole movie industry that is leading the way, I would say, even over the music industry in corrupting the morality, especially of young people. And we've known this, we've seen this happening, we've seen it growing for the last 50 or so years. But I wanted to just give a few examples of the corruption of morality in Hollywood and in the movie industry. Uh, Recently, a couple movies have been released. Uh, One a couple years ago, and it was the latest James Bond movie starring Daniel Craig. These are action-adventure flicks that have a lot of things blowing up and a lot of chase scenes and a lot of things that guys like to see in a movie. And unfortunately, it also has the perfunctory sex scene. It's almost an obligation in these James Bond movies. So you here you have a hero, a sort of a manly hero in the movie, and then he is also acting immorally. He's uh, engaging in premarital sex. James Bond is never married. He's never in a committed Uh, monogamous marriage relationship at all. That's part of, I guess, his persona. He's a fast-living, jet-set, fashion-forward spy uh, in in England, and he goes all over the country and around the world uh, chasing the bad guys and saving the populations of cities and continents and even the world from evil. Well, at the same time, he's also engaging in evil himself, immorality. And this is just part of the whole franchise, the James Bond franchise. If you look at uh, all the way back to the original Sean Connery, James Bond in the 60s, and then you go through all the other ones like the Pierce Brosnan era, and then you're, you're just going to find that that's part of the James Bond prosana, and that is immorality. Well, that's a problem because why? Because James Bond is somewhat of a masculine role model. He's a cool dude, you might say, who knows how to take care of himself. He can stop the bad guy, protect women, and so on and so forth. So he's actually someone who is seen as a positive person. He's the hero of these movies, and yet he's engaging in immoral activity, which is a problem because, as we know, uh, young people especially are very highly influenced by what they see, uh, movies, what they read, what they hear, and people are influenced, young people are influenced by these movies. And 
what the message is, is that you can be cool, you can be hip, you can be the hero, and then you can still break the laws of God and get away with it, and everything's fine, no problems. You notice that we never see any indication of James Bond getting a sexually transmitted disease, or if you were back in the 80s, he never picked up any HIV AIDS in any of his sexual escapades. So we see all of this fantasy land where he's just having sexual encounters with all of these beautiful women, and he never seems to have any negative consequences. He never has to pay any price for his breaking of God's laws. Well, we know in reality that a person who is promiscuous, who sleeps around, who disregards God's moral principles found in the Bible, that person has a good chance of actually contracting some kind of a sexually transmitted disease, or STD as it's called. And people by the millions have these STDs all over this country, especially the people up from the 60s and the 70s and the 80s when this was sort of a badge of rebellion and revolution from the status quo. Well, um, it's still here today, and in fact, not only is it non-revolutionary, but it's just normal now. The perception is, the appearance is that people who are single are going to be having sex and they're going to be sleeping around and everything's going to work out because that's what the movies say. That's what James Bond, see, James Bond has been doing this for 60 years in the franchise, James Bond, and nothing bad has ever happened to him. As a result, he's never uh, gotten AIDS and died, or he's never contracted a, a STD and had to stop being James Bond because of his uh, physical sufferings because of the disease. No, everything seems to be fine with him because in Hollywood you can make happy endings either just by riding off in the sunset on a horse or just keeping the franchise going like they're doing with James Bond, and there isn't any apparent uh, price to pay for his immoral uh, fornicating. But we know in real life that real people get these sexually transmitted diseases and they have real life consequences. And it really does cause pain and suffering long term as it would, as we would imagine it would, because God has laid out the world. He's the creator of everything and he knows how his creation works. And so if he says, don't do something because the creation is this way, you don't do it because God knows what's good and what's bad. And if you don't listen to God, if you if you ignore the Bible's teachings on morality, you are going to pay a price. But in Hollywood, they can make everything work out just fine and everyone live happy ever after because it's not reality. It's an illusion. It's a fake world in Hollywood. Now, that's the James Bond. So the latest James Bond shows Daniel Craig and another uh, person uh, involved in, in a sexual relationship, clearly an immoral act. And But there's even a more recent movie that I made note of that had this, and I'm skipping all kinds of movies that just have this as a matter of fact. It's, it's a normal feature of a Hollywood movie to have single people committing fornication or having sex without marriage. It's even a, a normal feature of movies to have married people committing adultery. And now, with the LGBTQ movement uh, pushed into the forefront, it's now common, and you're going to see a lot more of same-sex couples having sex. Uh, there was a recent uh, movie out. What was the movie? Um, there was a, re a television show, the Last, the Last of Us, uh, put out uh, on cable, where in this TV series, they have a whole episode devoted to some same-sex couple and actually showing them in the bedroom and doing what man and woman would do. And so you're going to see this further corrupting of morality, further immorality as the culture goes deeper, deeper into sin. You're going to see Hollywood attempt to normalize now not only fornication, that's already normalized. Not only adultery, that's normalized. But now you're going to see Hollywood attempt to normalize homosexuality and so-called same-sex relationships. And this is happening right before our very eyes in real time. So as 
Parents, you need to be aware of the fact that your child, your teenager, your young person is being assaulted by these heroes, so-called movie heroes and heroines, and being assaulted morally to try to persuade your children to do what is wrong in the sight of God. Now, this other movie that I comes to mind recently was the latest Tom Cruise movie, Top Gun Maverick. Now, the original Top Gun movie was done, I believe it was in the 80s or the early 90s, I think it was. Uh, really exciting, again, a man's man movie, uh, action adventure. Uh, Tom Cruise is a pilot and he's flying missions and he has to shoot down enemy pilots and so forth. And it's a really exciting action adventure movie that most guys would really like. And they, it was a box office smash. Well, many, many decades later, two or three decades later, now Tom Cruise is going to be Maverick again in a, another Top Gun movie in the second part. And lo and behold, once again, just like the original movie, here is Tom Cruise as a single man fornicating with a woman, whether she's married or not, we don't know. But again, the whole same script all over again. You have to have this perfunctory sex scene has to be thrown in. You have to have it. Hollywood uh, just throws it in like it's part of the formula. You have to have it because evidently they think that people have to be treated like some animals in the jungle where you have to throw some uh, bones to them. You have to throw some bait to them and they'll like you because you're giving them what they want to their carnal nature. And that's what it is. That's what the appeal is. Um, Hollywood has found, discovered, realized that within human beings, there is this carnal sinful, fallen nature that just loves to see depicted before it rebellion against God and the gratification of the flesh. And so they give it to the audience and the audience sits there and watches it. Well, we need to expose this and say, look, uh, we like your movie, uh, Hollywood. We like your, your action adventure movies with jet planes and missions and getting the bad guy and protecting loved ones and your nation. We like that theme, but we don't want to see immorality. We don't want to see rebellion against God. We don't want to see the glorification of immorality in your movies. And you would think that Hollywood would say, well, look, let's scale back on that because actually it's not a big part of the movie. All of these scenes could have been totally eliminated. It could have, they, they edit out a lot in the final cut on these movies. There's a lot of material that is just cut and thrown on the floor, editing floor. So there's a lot of things that could be edited out. They have all kinds of uh, scenes that are deleted. And sometimes when they release the uh, DVD of the original, Uh, Years later, they include some of the deleted scenes, and we can see what they've deleted. But all of these scenes could have been eliminated. The first Top Gun, the sex scenes could have all been eliminated, and it wouldn't have changed the movie one bit. It wouldn't have changed it one bit. The script wouldn't have been different. The outcome wouldn't have been different. People would still have liked the movie because of the content. And the same way with the second part to Top Gun, this latest one. Tom Cruise could have still had his girlfriend. They could have still uh, talked. They could have still kissed, but they didn't have to have a scene in the bedroom. All of that could have been put on the cutting room floor in the editing process, and nobody would have objected. Nobody would have missed it. But Hollywood, for some reason, thinks that, well, we have to have this in there because we have to appeal to the lowest level nature of humanity. We have to appeal to the lowest level. And so this is Hollywood's understanding of people. And yeah, they're right on one level because there are plenty of people who will just indulge in the flesh and indulge 
the, uh, the, the, the carnal lust of the eyes, and they will uh, like that part. But you know what? They would have liked the movie even if those scenes hadn't have been in it. It's the same way with, uh, if you look back uh, 20, 25 years ago with the movie Titanic. Uh, people liked the movie Titanic. They didn't like it because there was the perfunctory sex scene between the heroine and the hero. Uh, they liked it because of the storyline about this historic event where this huge ship actually hit an iceberg and went down and the people on board had to jump into life rafts and many people died and so forth. They liked that historical tie-in and then they liked the storyline between this wom woman, Rose, who meets this boy named Jack on board and their relationship and how that works out. They liked that storyline, but they didn't necessarily ask for and could have done without the sex scene. But see, again, Hollywood thinks that it has to do this because that's now part of its corrupt, degenerate formula. So you see all these movies coming out in Hollywood, and the vast majority of them have a sex scene between single adults or even single and married person, uh, all kinds of permutations of immorality. And these are all forbidden by God. All of these are immoral. All of these are the laws of God have stated they're prohibited and Christianity teaches against. And so Hollywood is actually assaulting not just Christians, but the Christian faith. And they're saying, see, we're going to stick a thumb in your eye and we're going to uh, give you the middle finger and we're going to put all of these uh immoral scenes into our movies and there's nothing you can do about it because you're going to still watch them anyway because you like a good storyline and you're going to put up with it. I don't think a whole lot of Christians have said, you know, we're going to boycott uh, these movies like, you know, Titanic because of these scenes. What most parents uh, tell their teenagers is that uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to watch this, but beware that there are, there is a scene where these two single people are committing immorality, and this is wrong, and this is bad, and you can start a conversation and say why this is bad, because God says it's wrong, and as Christians, we know it's wrong, and but Hollywood just loves to contradict God's word, it loves to, uh, you know, give the middle finger to Christians and the Christian church and say, see, we're, we're going to do whatever we want to do. But we need to be aware of the fact that now there's a new threat that's going to be coming, and it's already here, and that is, like I mentioned before, the normalization of the same-sex LGBTQ uh, sexual relationships. And this is now going to flood uh, movies all over the place. Like I mentioned before, we saw that in this, I think it's Paramount Pictures has put out The Last of Us, which is a science fiction uh, TV series based on a video game by the same name. And lo and behold, uh, they had to throw in a whole complete entire episode exploring a, quote, gay relationship. Um, and we're going to see a lot more of that. Um, in a recent movie that was just put out called Knock at the Door, I think it was, or something about Knock at the Cabin Door, um, it's centered around a pretty uh, strange plot about the world ending unless people choose who is going to die amongst them. And it features, again, a same-sex couple. So they're trying to normalize sexual perversion. And so we're being assaulted uh, by this powerful institution called Hollywood and the TV industry and the movie industry and video. So as parents, you need to be realizing that your kids are seeing all of this kind of stuff when they go to the movies. They're seeing all of this kinds of stuff when they watch television or when they're on the internet. 
they're given that message that it's okay to break the laws of God in respect to morality. They're being told that, well, even though the Bible teaches that it's wrong for singles to have sex or that married couples to have sex outside of marriage or that two men or two women to have sex in homosexuality relationship, that's wrong, that's evil, that's sin. Even though the Bible teaches that and Christianity teaches that and the church teaches that and has done so for 2,000 years, even though all of that, we're telling you it's not so, it's okay, go ahead and do this, and we're going to show you depictions of this so that you can understand what it is so you can do it. That's what Hollywood is teaching. And that is exactly what the devil, Satan, in the form of a serpent did in the Garden of Eden. You know, Adam and Eve were told by God, do not eat from the fruit of the tree of the, in the midst of the garden called the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Don't eat that because if you do, you will die. And so Satan, what does he do? He goes to Eve and says, uh, you're not going to die. That's not true, what God told you. What God really is keeping from you and hiding from you is that if you eat from this tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will be like God because you'll know good and evil. So you will be wise and you will have gained knowledge if you do this. So believe me and don't believe God. Well, you know what happened. We all know what happened. Eve believed the devil's lie over God's word. And that was the downfall of all humanity. That is called the fall. Adam followed her in that sinful disobedience to God. And that is the start of the fall of humanity. And we are all victims and we're all caught up in this fallen humanity. And that's why Christ needed to come to the cross and die on the cross in our place for our sins, because we're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We need a Savior, Jesus Christ, and that's why Jesus had to die for our sins, to save us from the fallen nature that we inherited from Adam and Eve and save us from our own sins. So we are part of the fallen humanity, and that's why Hollywood can make an appeal to these immoral sex scenes, because Part of our fallen humanity, our flesh, our sinful nature wants that, wants to see that, wants to participate in that, wants to rebel in that against the will of God. We don't want to be told what to do. We don't want God looking over our shoulder and saying, do this, don't do that. We want to make our own decisions. We want to be our own lords and gods of our own life. And so Hollywood, knowing that fallen sinful humanity will go along with them when they show these acts of rebellion, these immoral acts. And so they keep feeding people this, and, and people keep watching it, and they keep making profits. Well, we need to, at least in our own lives, say, look, we're not going to watch these scenes. We're not going to indulge or pro be a part of that. So if you're watching Titanic and you know there's a uh, immoral sexual scene uh, in one instance, you can be ready for that scene. And when that scene, you begin to see that scene, you turn away. You just close your eyes. And, you know, as Christians, I think Christians do this all the time at the movie theaters. If you're at the movie theaters and you've gone to see Top Gun and you want to see the jets flying and Tom Cruise coming to the rescue and saving the day, and all of these good and wholesome things. So there's nothing wrong with defending your nation. There's nothing wrong with fly, flying jet planes fast. There's nothing wrong with fighting the bad guys and protecting family and nation. Those are all good and healthy things. But when you see those sex scenes, what you just do, and I think a lot of Christian, especially Christian guys do this, but I know Christian girls do it, is when you see those scenes starting to develop, you just turn away. You just close your eyes and say, no, I'm not going to indulge in that because that is the carnal rebellion that the movie theaters have thrown in there to appeal to our lower natures. I'm not going to indulge in that. And you just turn away or you just look look away or you just close your eyes and say, no, I'm just going to, or if you have a DVD 
And if, or if you're streaming the movie at your home, you just fast forward many times. Uh, rather than totally say, I'm not going to go see Top Gun, you just fast forward through that scene, get it over with, done, boom, get back to the action, to the real story, to the real plot. Uh, and everyone knows, everyone knows that who's ever seen these movies, all these kinds of movies, and they're all over the place, that Again, those scenes add nothing to the movie that we didn't already know. They're just gratuitous. They're just filler that Hollywood thinks that it has to show. And, uh, and, and as Christians, we can just say to Hollywood without any fear of contradiction, hey, hey, why don't you just leave those out? Nobody asks for them and nobody cares about them. And they're not important. So just leave them out. And they'd actually actually have more viewership if they did. But in either case, as Christians, um, for example, there are really good movies, generally speaking, that are being put out by Hollywood, and yet they have maybe one, sometimes two, bad, immoral scenes that really should have been deleted but weren't, and so we can delete them on our own, in our own minds and in our on our eyes by just turning away and saying no, or fast-forwarding and just saying no, we're not going to do that. So you don't have to sit there and indulge in the carnal flesh that Hollywood is pumping out. Or if it looks like the storyline and the plot isn't really that good anyway, you can just totally skip the movie altogether. And that is something that I've done in the past. Um, but if, if there is a really good movie and the reviews are very good and there seems to be a really interesting plot, um, you can always fast forward through the sex scenes or you can just, if you're in a movie theater, just close your eyes and turn away from the screen and say, look, I'm going to delete this scene because those people in Hollywood weren't smart enough and wise enough to do so on their own. So I'm going to do it in my own mind and protect yourself and train your kids, your teenagers to do that too. And to also have a common sense and a lot of godly wisdom in what they actually go to the theaters to see and what they actually watch on television. There are some movies that are are beyond redemption. There's, there's no use even going into the beginning of the movie and trying to edit out things on your own because it's just the whole plot and the whole theme is just degenerate. So you wouldn't even want to wade into that mess. But these are solutions that uh, we can all use in dealing with these kinds of degenerate, immoral movies. And we do have to do these. As Christians, we cannot just simply drink in the poison that the culture is trying to get us to drink into. We need to be able to be wiser and smarter than that and follow the Lord and glorify him in everything we say and do and see and hear. And uh, that is pleasing to the Lord. Well, I hope this has been helpful and challenging to us all. We'll talk to you next week. God bless.